In this video, I'm going to show you some of the most common areas of slow move that get used when setting up drives. So I have the software open and I am going to connect to the drive. So, but first I'm going to go into the edit connection slash scan window. And you'll notice that I don't have a drive in my scan window. I'm just going to double check communications by clicking on the settings wheel. Again, and it opens up and COM7 is a USB 485 cable. That's our serial cable. And we are connected and the drive is switched on. I'm going to click OK and scan network. And our drive is found, it's an ATV12, and I'm going to connect. So I'll click connect and we will synchronize with the drive. Our little warning. We are now connected and synchronized. And I wanted to be synchronized because I want to show you some of the functions for troubleshooting the drive while you are connected and synchronized. We know that we can create a folder offline and this bar across the top would be blue in that case. And then you would have to download any settings that you, that you change in the program to the drive. Right now, any changes we make will be automatically synchronized. So I'll start with the parameters tab and the first parameters that you set up are your, your input and output type. So you switch between two wire and three wire in this uh, input output menu. And you can switch the type of two wire from transition edge to level. So that's run at power up. Level is run at power up. Or priority forward is run at power up. Okay, be careful, make sure that it's safe to do that. So if it's a pump or fan, you definitely will do that. In inputs and outputs, you can configure your AI1 connection, so your analog input for current or voltage. By default, it is configured for five volts, which is the drive internally supplied voltage for that analog input. And we can configure our logic out function so we can assign out we can assign the logic function to numerous drive variables frequency threshold attain so if it hits a certain frequency it will turn on that output so that's in the logic out configuration we can also configure our analog out in that same window so that's the inputs and outputs menu the motor control menu is where you set up all of your motor parameters. So once you have those set, they typically do not change. You can adjust your switching frequency in there to uh, lower the audible noise of the drive. If it's, uh, if it's okay to do that, you can change the type of control from performance, which is constant torque to standard to pump. When you have it set to pump, it's a variable torque mode. It will use very little current at low operating frequencies and will save you energy. If it's required that you don't have to operate your pump or fan at full speed and you're operating it at a lower level, you will save a lot of energy. In the motor control menu for the application, you have a maximum output frequency. You can adjust it in that window so basically your your hsp will not be able to exceed in this case 80 hertz okay so that's the maximum for the application so that prevents an operator from going above a certain level okay that's your max output frequency okay so it's important to set up all your motor parameters that would be one of the first things that you do along with your basic input but configuration with respect to two and three wire control. Another function that you, another programming tab that you use quite a bit is the application function menu. And just think, it, these are functions and applications. And you'll notice that I have rever reverse assigned. 
So I have reserve, reverse assigned to Li2. And I, have, uh, I don't have jog assigned or skip frequency. And I have preset speeds. So I have Li3 high, Li4 high. So those are logic inputs to command different digital speeds. And then I can set my preset speeds to 40, 60, 80 for my, for my speeds. My first speed is my LSP. Okay, and I'll show you that next. Okay, so um, in the operate tab, so I'll, I'll click on operate. So I have this set up as a variable torque application. Okay, so it could be like a blower or a fan, we'll call it. So, and we're just operating at different speeds. Um, okay, so if you have a look at this operate tab, what you will notice is down on the lower left, you will see all of the inputs that you have assigned. You'll notice you have your analog input and it's inactive because there's no voltage at that analog input. Your relay fault output, you can, you can view the status of it. It's active because we don't have a drive fault. And then we have our logic one output or LO1 assignment, frequency threshold attained. It's inactive because it's not at that frequency so that you can view your, your assigned outputs in this window. And you'll notice that I have uh, forward on LI1, reverse on LI2, a second preset speed on LI3, and a fourth uh, preset speed um, um, on LI4, PS4 right here, okay? Now, so this in this operate tab, it's very useful because you can quickly adjust your ramp in here. Just change that to four. Change this to two. You can adjust your low speed and your high speed very easily. You can adjust your motor thermal current. You can adjust your preset speeds. In this case, 40, 60, 80. So I can adjust those in this window. And then we can monitor in this window. So we can view our frequency uh, before the ramp. So that basically that's your that's your command frequency. In this case, we don't have a potentiometer, so that's not going to change um, through a pot. It may change through our multiple speed command. You've got your output frequency, motor current, and you'll see those change if I operate the drive. Now, so I've showed you the parameters tab, and the most common being the application function, the motor control, and the input output. So those are the three most common. I showed you the operate tab and that's where we can view our monitoring parameters we can view our input and output for purposes of troubleshooting and check and wiring and we can adjust our settings and we can add extra settings okay so we can add we can add uh, in that window so i just search for reverse if you want to see what's Assigned to reverse, we can. I have my reverse input assignment. It's Li2 high, so we could adjust it or change it in this window. Okay. Um, our scope we won't use very often. So if you want to play around with that, you can. So you can record motor and drive data. If that's a, I have a whole another video for that. So I'm going to click on the monitoring tab. And in this monitoring tab, we can have a look at the mains voltage. We can use a, a meter or an angular display. We can uh, check the output frequency of the drive, the angular um, gauge in this, in, in this case. Uh, I can look at the motor thermal state and we can get an idea of how much loading there is on, on the application and so on. So there's there's a, there's a lot we can do with, uh, uh, here's motor current. I can put the motor current down here. And if I run the drive, you'll see those values change.
Okay, so we can view those. At 0 0.8 amps for motor current. Okay, so um, I, I want to just show you one more thing when we're working on parameters. Um, you'll be setting up different functions. So if you if you search, this is a very useful search function. If you search, um, let's say we want to find out about jog. We want to connect it and make it work. So if I enter jog in that window, it takes me right to jog. So I can look at the jog assignment. It's not assigned. I could assign it to an input if I have it wired and then go from there. Okay, um, I can look at um, ramps. Let me see if ramps comes up. Mark. Or is it ramp? Well, there we are, ramp. So we have got our, our primary ramp and then our secondary ramp, our ramp switching input so we can switch to another ramp. Okay, that's in there. So make sure you try the, uh, the, the search function it's quite useful. Let's see if pump comes up. Pump. Oh, yeah, pump. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Okay, so there you go. So in the operate tab, if you look at the uh, input output terminals on the lower left, I'll operate some and you can see them change state so I'm, I'm operating the forward operating the reverse and then I can operate the binary coded switch you can see it will change state four is active and three is active so that's calling for the fourth speed okay so that's just an overview of, of the main features of the uh, software and where to find some of the functions I'll just uh, disconnect now go offline